I was thinking about something that we're working on and building currently and have built and the, the value it's had for some of our clients. And it really brought me back to bounce rates. I don't think people understand the impact that, bounce, that evaluating bounce rates can have on SEO. This isn't paid search or, or bounce rates on landing pages. We're talking about an SEO. So, you know, I got a question for you guys. You know, think about these questions, right? So when your ranking stop driving increases in leads and sales for your business, what do you do? Have you ever thought, well, wow, my rankings are staying the same, but my business from SEO is down? It's kind of counterintuitive when that happens. If I'm maintaining a rank at a certain position and that rank is driving less and less value for me, what's going on? What's happening at a larger perspective? A, you should always check Google Trends for those keywords to make sure that you're not seeing a decrease in keyword volume. If any of you in here have ever had your boss come into your office and say, why is our search volume down? The first thing you need to do is take those keywords, drop them in Google Trends, turn your screen around if it's the case, and say, well, there's less people searching for this. So obviously, I've had clients where we've kept them broke even from an SEO campaign, from a traffic standpoint, and it was a victory. Why? Because search traffic in their industry nosedived. So for them to keep their traffic the same from search from when we started to when we ended, to me, was a victory. So I'm going to get into a real live kind of case study on, on how we used bounce rates to help solve an issue, an SEO issue for a client. So we actually evaluate bounce rates for each keyword daily for each client. And when that bounce rate spikes up or down for a certain keyword on a certain page, we're automatically alerted. I think I have this somewhere in my presentation, but it's like, hello, Google Analytics API. Use it. It is a lot of fun. And it's not just fun, but what it does, it will give you time back. So one of the things I've realized uh, running a search company is that there's never going to be enough great search people to hire. There's a lot of mediocre search people. I don't want them in my company. So we got to figure out ways to use technology to speed up things that are highly valuable. Bounce rates are in Google Analytics. Your keywords are in some other report somewhere, Excel, whatever it might be. Take that API, get that stuff out of Google Analytics, match it up with your keywords that are in Excel or in another web-based tool, and now you can actually see when a keyword moves up or down, when the bounce rate moves up or down. So we called a client that we got uh, a ranking for on the first page for one of their really important keywords. It was a branded keyword. And they had a bounce rate of about 80%. How did we catch this? We caught this because we're looking at the bounce rates for their keywords in buckets. And this has probably happened to a lot of you, where a home page or a page you didn't want to rank well for a word is actually ranking well. Have any of you ever, guys have ever had that happen? Good. Some of you, it's almost inevitable that sometimes a page will rank that you said, that's not really the page that I want to rank well for. So you have a couple options when that happens. You can either target a new page, which is often what the marketing department wants you to do. Well, that page doesn't fit well, so target a new page. You can get that one ranked too, right? No big deal. Um, which causes you to potentially lose the rank. So you've got to think, is it worth the trade-off? I'm not here to tell you that it is or is not, but you've got to think, is it worth the trade-off to try to target a new page, have that ranking potentially drop, that drop in rankings better offset that drop, uh, better uh, also result in a drop in the bounce rate, or I'd be pretty PO'd. So um, the other thing is, is what we recommended our client do, and that was to dynamically change products for this one brand on the homepage based on these high bouncing keywords. I think the risk here is that it gets, people can get overly aggressive with any tactic. And as you all know, all of you should know that the thing with search is that any tool, technique, or tactic can go from being very fine and legit to totally black hat and get you in trouble kind of in the, in the blink of an eye. So of course the client goes, oh, this is great. Should we do this for everything? And I went, no, you shouldn't do this for everything unless it's actually helping the user experience. Um, what was great is that now what we did when they had their product list, their product grid on the home page, the first three products were actually of the manufacturer if you came in with the keyword that before was bouncing. The ranking maintained. It always bounces between five and seven traditionally. Um, we cut the bounce rate down by over 20% and sales for this product increased 2x, not 2x percent, 2x, 200%. Um, and we didn't improve their ranking. So you've got to think, right? SEO is all about moving your site up in the search results and getting ranked, right? No, wrong. It's still about making money. This is the biggest distraction of them all, is that people look at SEO and go, where do I rank? A, personalized search causes that to be very different. Based on your local search, you know, that causes things to be very different. But they don't look at this part of it. You know, so if you've already got great rankings, now's not the time to take your hand and extend it over your back and pat yourself on the back 
and walk into your boss with some great ranking reports. Now is the time to say, well, which of these are bouncing high that I know we've got a product that fits that, that, that user um, or that searcher? I had a client who their developer actually built a tool to scrape their competitors' prices. They're the top three competitors. It's freaking wicked. Really smart. Why? Because they now know when they're not price competitive. So when they see a bounce rate go, go crazy, they're like, ah, well, you know, we're not price competitive. We're one of the highest prices out there on this, one, on this one product. So I thought that was really, really a smart way to use a scraper for something that was actually, uh, that was actually valuable. So here are your takeaways. Obviously, if you're analyzing SEO by where you rank, you would have never caught this issue. And this issue actually helped improve the bottom line for this client. So obviously, you should be doing or analyzing your SEO by much more than just how you rank. If you trend out your bounce rates for your top keyword buckets, attend a bucket keywords together, and you trend out your conversions, you'll be able to start to see a, a correlation. Oh, when my, when, when my bounce rate goes up by this much, I see conversions drop by this. It'll help you make smarter decisions. You better take action on this. Anybody who walks out of here that's got keywords that are ranking well and doesn't look at your bounce rate, I'm going to hunt you down. Um, because this is good stuff, right? You got to think, like, we all are in this pursuit of increasing our ranking, increasing our ranking, increasing our ranking. We helped increase this client's revenue by not increasing the rank that we already had, right? Okay, good. 